here. I'm in my office and I'm working on adding some cabling in my case for networking. Um, I find that in some areas of the house the wireless doesn't work as well. So I thought I might share with you how some of this works. There are two primary types of cable that most people will use in their homes. It's category 5E or, or CAT 5E. The E stands for enhanced. And then there's CAT 6. So category 6 cable. Category 6 is a faster transmission. Uh, it does allow for some faster speeds. The one thing you need to keep in mind is your computers can only transmit information at the lowest denominator. So at any given point, if you've got CAT5 or CAT5E uh, in your home, then CAT6 won't do you any good to, to have that. Um, and that's if you're talking about connections going through. If I had like a router in my home from my internet service provider and I could plug directly to it rather than going wireless, I would use a CAT6 cable and it all depends on how fast their unit is, but I could get some really fast speeds that way. In my case, I already have some wires that are already running to different areas in the house that were put in when the house was built. There's no way for me to, to really replace them. So I'm going to be going with category 5E. Uh, I should pay extra really then for the CAT6 because it won't benefit me. So the first thing I want to show you are some tools that you can use. You can see here that I've opened up the wall. I already had a faceplate sitting in here that I can take advantage of. Um, why did I do this? I cut from stud to stud and I'll show you later but because when I replace this piece right here I'll just put some more 2x4s on each side that I can place this to. I can screw it onto it and just do some minor uh, uh, fixing on the sides as far as you know spackling or whatever you want to call it and texturing uh, and repainting. Um, it'll, it'll disappear. You just won't see it when it's done. The next thing I did was I drilled. In my case, I've gone and I've had this for years because I've worked in electronics for years and, and setting up networks. So this is like a about a five foot uh, drill bit. It has like a screw tip end and a little hole in it. That allows me if I want to, I can thread some string through that and use that to pull line up. So I need to get one of these pulled up from the other side, which is coming from my TV area. So it goes over for uh, my internet connection. I pull in uh, Netflix movies and so forth. And uh, that way I've got a solid connection. I'm not relying on the wireless. Whether the wireless is working good or bad any given day, I've always got a solid connection. I'm also running another line, which I've just dropped down. I drilled a hole using my five foot <laughs> drill bit. And I bent it at an angle. And I'm gonna show you basically what I did. I put it in close to this end, and then I just bent this like that and drilled. So it was drilling at an angle coming back in so it would reach under the house. Under my house, uh, we have open space. We've got concrete around the edge and then wood that's built up on that. So I need to drill underneath the flooring through that wood and into that open space. I could do, as I said, put string on here to pull a string through and then attach my lines to that with some tape uh, to pull it through. In my case, I'm threading some more line that I'm bringing to another area of the house I'm also going to set up with a bowl plate. And I'm going to just crawl under the house then uh, with my electrical tape. I'm going to attach uh, the video line to this and I'll pull through and I'll show you that in a moment. We're under the house. We're making our way over to the cable. <laughs> All right, here's the yellow cable. And over here is the orange cable that I'm adding to this. So we're going to just do a little snipping here. And now I'm going to use my electrical tape to wrap these two together over a good broad section. Notice that I've wrapped a large section with uh, tape together. I'd, I'd rather see this uh, go through in one shot than have to pull it through multiple times. I like to spend as little time down here as possible. And I'm even going to feed some of this right through from below. 
I can pretty much tell that I've already pushed it all the way up into the room. Alright, time to get out of here. <laughs> Got quite a mess here, we'll get it cleaned up. But I want you to see that before, the cable that went over to the TV for the internet, that was coming through the floor. And that's not, not great. We're going to get that sealed up. In fact, I snipped it off and I just pulled out the end. That's gone. That's ready to seal up because I've now pulled that wire through here, ready to get fed. And you can see here's where I have the two wired together. If possible, I'll just feed this orange line back through. Otherwise, I'll tape a little bit, pull it back through to get my orange line back down. I am going to have to go into the house one last time once I set up a hole and, and get things set up for uh, the other spot in the house that I'm wiring. Okay, with any luck, I'll be able to feed this other line down through the hole. No problem. When doing these types of jobs, you always want to leave some extra line that you can push into the wall in case you ever have to go and uh, re put a new connection on or redo something. You've always got extra line to play with. I have a lot of cables that will be going to this room that will connect to a switch. So I've got this nice plate here. This is uh, for keystone jacks. That's a term you want to recognize, keystone jacks. You can find these types of things in like Home Depots and hardware stores. Sadly, to get uh, like Category 5 E cables like this, uh, seven footers, I had a customer that went out and bought it for $10.50 at an Office Depot. I sell the same thing for four bucks. But you can get them for less. For example, uh, if you go to one of my companies, POSshopper.com, we do have cables. And if you were to call, you could get all these things for much less than you probably would get in a normal store. And then here's the jack that goes into the plug. I can get colored ones. Uh, I like yellow for video. It makes sense. Most video connections are yellow. And uh, so I got a yellow keystone jack for that. And the cables have to get punched in according to colors. So you'll have to know about the colors. Uh, there's uh, orange, white, and orange. There's green, white, and green. Brown, white, brown. And blue, white, and blue. That's eight wires. I'll show that to you in a minute. But the one thing I want to demystify is how, how you know what, where to plug them and so forth. On the back of this one, it shows some diagrams. And on those diagrams, it talks about, and this is common, 586A and 586B. Uh, which one to use? Honestly, it doesn't matter. They'll both work. But the industry standard is 586B. So whenever I do wiring, I always follow 586B, most people do. That way if someone goes to reconnect one another place, they're using the same wire combinations, the order of how they connect. You can see the wires are in pairs. You've got your orange, blue, brown, and green. And within those pairs, for example, on this one, we have one that's a solid orange and one that's orange and white striped. When doing this, it's best to have the end of the sheathing as close to the inner part as possible. So I'm going to just line it up like this. I already know my coloring scheme that I need. Get my first one in place. my orange, in my case orange and white, and then my green, and then my green and my white. And those are in place. And uh, I'll do the same thing with the other side. And following the 586B scheme, according to the instructions for this unit, I'm going to go over here with brown, and then brown and white. And then blue. And then the white and blue one. Some of these come where you don't need a tool to do them. Some of them require a tool. 
Uh, I bought one that requires a tool because I own the tool. And I can just punch it down into place. But you can get another version that does require a tool to punch these in place. I just snip off the ends. I have another part of the tool that will cut them, but that's just faster. Now that everything is punched into place according to the color diagram, they do provide a little cap that goes on top. You'll notice that one end has an opening to go on the end of the cable right there, and it just goes on top, snaps in place. For your wall plate, again, these are keystone jacks. If you look at the back, one end will say up, so you know which end is up on the wall, and that corresponds with how these lock into place. I'm going to simply guide this in, and then push and lock it into place. See, it's really simple, and now I have a nice wall plate. I know this yellow is for video. I have other colors for some of the other areas in the house. This keystone jack's a little different, but you'll notice it has a diagram for colors. The top one is for A, and the bottom set is for B, so it tells you exactly where to put in each of the colors. It has a slightly different set of caps. It basically works the same way. It's just a keystone jack. Once again, we're just going to slide it into place and lock it in. There you go. It's really that easy. Okay, so I've uh, got all my jacks put into place and tested them all. I took 2x4 pieces, anchored them to the existing 2x4s. That gave me, and snug to the front, and that gave me a way to then just screw the original piece back into place. I can clean up these edges, I can putty them in, texture them, and paint them. You won't even know I've been in there. Now all I have to do is screw this into place afterwards and I'll have my jacks all ready to go. We're in the second location that I'd set up. You can see I've got the line coming in from down below. I've left an extra cable on the wall in case I ever had to work on it. I've got more to pull. I've already tested the line off to a computer. I know it's working well with my keystone jack and everything's all tight in there. Did the same kind of arrangement where I did a, a rather large cut here. The reason that I did that is because I want to be able to get to these studs here. This will allow us to take 2x4 pieces, spare 2x4 pieces are great, put them right against the existing drywall, get them squared up, and then anchor them in. This will give us something to put our original piece against to screw it into place, lock it in place, so it's nice and flush with the original piece, and we'll be able to patch that up and make it not visible. Okay, we got the 2x4 pieces in place. So now we can go ahead and replace the insulation in the wall. And then we can put our wall piece in. Which gets secured against the 2x4s we put in. And there you go, nice and flush to the original. A little sanding, putting, texturizing, painting, we're done. It'll look new. And we'll have a nice wall plate in place with an outlet. After patching the wall and putting texturing on and painting, there's the finished project over on this section. This is a great way to go. I basically have my, um, my switch over here took a copy of it, I'll make sure this is level, and then I know exactly where to screw for mounting it. And I can replace uh, these long cables that I had with some really nice clean short ones. And there we go, finished project. Looks nice. These wires will be hidden later. This whole unit's going away. I'll show you the, the room later on a Homebrew Wednesday, but that's a real simple project. How to cut open the wall, put in your cables, your wires, how to punch out what we call keystone jacks, and set up a whole unit. Project done. The great thing about having uh, wires run through the house is the speeds are magnificent. So much better than wireless. 
my wife was thinking she needed a new computer. Now that I've ran the new cable to that other room, she says it feels like she's on a new computer. It runs so much faster. So <laughs> I saved a load of money by wiring the house. Hope this helps you with your home projects.